right, welcome everybody this late evening to a post. I got my second vaccination shot, uh, and I'm crippled because of it for several days. Episode of Let's Put a 386 Together, finally, now that I have the use of my arm back. Ah, oh, god damn. If we have to go through this every six months, Jesus. Anyways, not complaining. Uh, let's talk about the computer we're building here. Let's say... Advanced Micro Devices AMD DX40 megahertz on this lovely, I'm not even sure what kind of board this is, uh, Super Mini. Uh, the BIOS date is from 93 or 94, so it's a really late entry. 128K of cache, 8 megs of RAM, I put a new CMOS battery in it. This is actually from a 407 transponder, if anybody knows what the 407 is. It's a highway that uh, you pay for, and there's a transponder, and I found it at the junkyard. I'm like, let's see what's inside. Busted it open. Got this out. It's excellent. I put this board away, like, oh, like eight months ago in the wintertime uh, for a future project, and it kept the date till I think it was off by 15 minutes or something, so excellent stuff. Um, it's a very plain board, nothing fancy. Five ISA slots, 128k of cache, 8 megs of RAM, 40 megahertz. So that's going into the case. Um, the era correct 120 meg max store hard drive from 22nd of January 1992. So we're going to try to make a build from around, you know, the early 90s. Uh, and to match that here, Zymos Quadtel VGA 512k. We have a VGA and an EGA out. Uh, dip selectable. Obviously, I didn't check the D, uh, the EGA because I don't have an EGA monitor anymore. Sucks. If I ever get one, I'm never letting it go. Uh, the I.O. card is stuck. It's, uh, this is a new in-box unit. It's, I've only put it in a couple times to test it with this board. Gold Star Prime 2, nothing fancy. Everything's activated. Uh, we've got a game port. we got a COM port. We got two COM ports and an LPT port. So that's going in there. And I'm just going to put this in. I, I, I don't know if I had not tested this. It's an 82C924 Opti. Uh, I believe this one does have the OPL3 on it. It has an IDE controller for a CD-ROM, which we will not be using. Uh, and if you look over here. Actually, let's talk about the case. So the case, let me get the cover. I've already pre retrobrighted this case cover and put a nice 386 sticker on it from an old 486 build uh, that obviously was not a 386, so I pulled that off. It's got some retrobright goo in there, I'm gonna clean that up. That's fine because that's probably not even going on tonight. And the case uses one of these weird, like this kind of power supply. I know there's a name for it, the person I bought it from told it to me, but I forgot already. Uh, but it's, it's one of these, and it's weird because usually I, I have one on a 386 that's about this long, or this deep, and has a switch on the side. This one I rigged up a temporary switch just for now, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with that switch, but after cutting out a little tiny trim of the ring for the keyboard connector here, I was able to make this fit, so... That's nice and in there, yes. The reason it's not mounted is because probably the motherboard has to go in first, because as you can see, you know, it goes over there. Underneath that. This is from a huge 46 tower from Gateway. So this thing is pretty loud, uh, and it has a lot of connectors on it, uh, and, and it works. So that, that's a bonus, that it works. And if you look at the front of the case, I've already pre-fitted it with the early 90s requisite items, 1.44, uh, 1.2. Uh, unfortunately, this is the only diskette that I have, and it doesn't read in any of my drives. So I don't know if this drive is good or not. I, no idea. Uh, this drive came to me with a system, the 46 system uh, from Hungary. So, yeah, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Again, I only got one of these, so not sure. 
This works for sure. This works for sure. I don't even know what this display is. I'm not going to hook any of that up tonight. Tonight, it's just let's get the crap in and posted, maybe booted, because I know that the hard drive has DOS on it and Windows, and I tested, I bench tested all this stuff, except this, uh, for, you know, bootability. And I ran some, I ran the Check It program on it, multiple passes of the RAM. So... That should be good. So having said that, uh, let's get this in and, and going, I suppose. We'll start with the motherboard. It's uh, ridiculously tiny compared to this case, so already this standoff can go. I'm semi-prepared today. I have most of the tools that I need out here. So the brass connector here and here. Which isn't even tightened. So I'm not sure what came in this case. The original sticker said 486, but it looked like I wouldn't call it a knockoff, but like a crappy reproduction. So I tried to take it off in a civilized manner, and that 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 did not work. It just tore. So yeah, whatever. I know where I can get more of those. Not a problem. So we're gonna put the standard standoffs. In here, we got a couple here. Yeah, actually, that's that's good enough. Oh, and that broke right off the bat. All right, let me fire up my soldering iron. And get some water for it. All right, soldering iron is warming up. I can hit that on the top there. That's good. So I'll just continue with the installation. These are always these are always my favorite. That's not even. Oh, okay. I see what's happening here. That's in the right spot. Oh, that should also too be okay. All right. What are we stuck on? That. Okay. All right. Awesome. So unfortunately now, <laughs> that's going to discharge the battery. Or not the battery, but the, uh, um, the CMOS settings will be lost. Whatever. It's fine. We'll put them in again. So let's get some screws there. I have some time. I really got to sit through these and separate each one into the type that it is. Straight in there, very nice. Standoffs are doing their jobs. All right, let's strip this one out. Get some two sided tape afterwards to tape it to something, like I always do. recommend soldering directly over a motherboard with hot hot solder that way if you lose a bit it will go onto the motherboard and potentially connect something that, that's what you want in this case that's always good that's what pros do 
I think if uh, Lewis Rothman is watching this, he'd be like, yeah, perfect job, kid. This is exactly, this is exactly it. this all the way. Fifteen nanosecond cash too, eh? Wow. This thing's definitely a later model three eighty six. Or I mean late late I guess whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. I think it's ninety three. What I saw there. Oh, I wish I had a fourth third hand. Okay, Let me build that up a little. Now I know. Next time I'm at the junkyard, I see some 407 transponders. Oh, no, there's some kick-ass batteries in them. Okay, I'm probably going to revisit this because I just don't like how it's all like. Unless I can glue it to this. I don't know. For now, that's fine. Goal of the video is to boot it up. Okay, then. Video card. Good. IO card. We'll put that here, closer to the action. What else? What else was there? There was a sound card. I also have. I'm not going to put it in yet, but there may be a part two to this. There probably will be. I don't know when, but this uh, land card. I know it's for BNC, but it uh, has a drop in port, you can put a ROM in here, and XDID may or may not work in here. I have XDID in one of my 386s. It's glorious. It's so awesome. Uh, and it's done the same way. I have a RJ45, but I don't really use it right now, so. And the hard drive, we'll slot that guy in here, maybe. It's a very precision case. I mean, there's so many there's so many holes for everything. Uh, and also, about that, to get to the holes underneath, it's kind of weird because you only you have to use these flat screws. If not, it's not going to slide out. So, yeah, kind of, a, kind of a weird design, but we'll see how well this one fits in here with just the two on top. Of course, I use matching screws. So that's all of them are the same. Oh, that's, that's a different thread. Bitch. <laughs> Let's try this one. So yeah, the specs on this. Early, early 90s, something you can play Dune 2 on. Oh, by the way, I don't know, but I have found 
Doom 2 Extended recently. And whenever I'm not sleeping or dying of pain from, well, not dying, but it's super uncomfortable to have this vaccine inside of me, I, I, I try to play it. Um, but it's, it's so far so good. You can basically play as, uh-oh, I thought that might be a problem. Oh, come on. That is a problem. I don't have any other floppy cables. All right, since we're not sure about the B drive anyways, let's do this for now. And it was Dune 2 Extended. Yeah, awesome game. You can play as the Sardaukar, however you pronounce them, the Fremen, or the Mercenaries. And I have no idea how I found it. I was just messing around on YouTube, and it was a recommended video. And I was like, how have I not heard of this? So, if you have not heard, if you're a fan of Dune 2, uh, then I would suggest going to see that. Alright, I'm going to turn off the stupid notifications. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, and I don't know what any of these are. The speaker is the black and yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Oh, and it's under the video card. Definitely want the speaker in case something doesn't work. These are some weird, like they're not even labeled. What is this? Orange looks like hard drive. Okay, so, oh, that's convenient. I've never seen that. There's an I.O. card, or um, hard drive on a four DIN. I've never seen these on two before. All right, what's this one? This one's got to be reset. Yep, reset. Wait, is it? Yep, all right. Reset. Don't have to worry about polarity on that one. Something's been cut here. What's been cut? What's been cut? Oh, the power LED has been cut. Not cut, but modified. All right. But also modified. Will it reach? Of course not. Of course not. Well, whoever had this case before me made sure that it won't reach. If I cheat a little through the side, it might be able to work. So, and if I remember correctly, that one goes there. Anode and cathode. Oh, this is terrible. Why don't we just take these off? Like, this is not necessary. Trick two, and we can fix that later. Okay. Then bam. Okay. That looks like the turbo switch. I'll leave that alone right now. Uh, all right, so we got the floppy hooked up. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. Come on, cable. Oh man. All right. Well, I'm like I have no more of these. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to open up some other computers and switch these around. All right. Anyway, power supply time. So now that that's in, this. I'm gonna screw it down. Another thing I recommend is using a broken micro flathead to drive in Phillips screws. Again, this is what the pros do. Exactly what they do. They do this and nothing else. If I had a 
if I had a merchandise shop, I would sell these. I wonder when this case was made. If it uses this kind of old ass power supply, it must have probably been made in the late 80s. I wonder what it originally had, because definitely that 486 sticker. And now that I've just seen that the power the power LED um, header has been modified, I doubt whatever was in here was original to the case. So, yeah. But we're going to try to make it visually error-correct and using these parts as error-correct as possible. All right, so good luck upgrading your RAM. Uh, if you're looking at this right now, you, you can probably see what I'm talking about. Uh, the RAM is like underneath here, so you have to remove the power supply to pull the RAM out. That's that's our late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. I have another one of these computers where if you want to... That's a 46 I'm building, actually. It's the, it's the next one up. Uh, the Hungarian 46, actually. Uh, I did manage to get it working after a lot of repairs. And... Oh, here's another. Alright, so the problem with this one is... Oh, wait. The twist indicates that it's... Oh, this might work. This might work. Okay. It's a very strange cable. So usually, after the twist is A, uh, I literally was looking for an ID cable and I just found this kind of weird monstrosity. So after the twist is A and then it retwists back to the B drive, those, and we'll try that out. Cool find. And where's pin one? You can't see anything here. Okay, so it looks like that's pin one. It's not even keyed. Pin one, it's usually towards the power supply. But we'll go with the twists here. Sometimes it's a way. I don't know if this is a Mitsumi. Mitsumi's like to do that sometimes. Sony's too, weirdly enough. Will it reach the, come on, reach. All right, unfurl yourself and Oh, 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 all right, okay, that's a bit of a stretch, but we'll see. Now, the reason I went over there was to get an ID cable. All right, here we have one. Will that be enough? It will not be enough. It's a better ID cable. like this. Mm. All right. Oh, this is dark sorcery. All right. You know what? I sometimes get lucky with these and I can do something like this. Do this. Will I have enough room? I will not. This cable is also no good. Okay, is that one the same? Yep. That one looks the same too. All right, 
since we're aiming for just a post, let's screw around with cables later. I'm just going to put the single ID that I know works from here to here and give it some power. Floppy power and hard drive power. We have no shortage of no shortage of external cabling for your accessories. All right, so that's not hooked up, but the two the two floppies are and the hard drive is. All right, let's just do a double check here. Is the motherboard connected? The mother. Oh. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> yes, you're the connector for the motherboard. Right now. All right, I'm not even going to screw this power supply down. In case I have to get that CMOS battery slightly better than it is now. And by slightly, I mean like just, you know longer cables, stick it to the side or something. So, yeah, the power supply fits physically. But now, if I can, oh, that's going to be fun. Will it actually fit? See, I didn't think about any of this. I was just like, yeah, power supply, but it looks like it's good. And, ooh, all right. Black to black. I can make that work, maybe. But for now, I'm just gonna go a bit on the safe side and I think if I loom those, yeah, if I throw those through a loom. And tuck them away neatly. That'll be a tight pinch, but it'll fit. Okay. Let's get it hooked up. The basics here. So we have this and VGA. And keyboard. To be completely honest, I don't have the biggest confidence that this will just boot right up and work. Uh, I'm thinking 50 50. I'll just make sure that those power connectors are black to black as they should be. Okay, good. Uh, there's actually live current going through there, so but everything else. The motherboard is not grounding out on anything. Uh, okay. We just move the camera over to the screen, and here we go. Oh, the two floppy lights are on, so something's wrong with the wiring, and we've got no posts. We're off to a fantastic start. So let's take that out. Take off the IDE. Get power again. So now this floppy light is on, so I think what the problem is... Is that maybe this whole thing is backwards? Okay, yeah, let's just take that out. So the 
splashing bits happening there. Nothing. Where has it worked on the bench? Okay. Uh, let's pull some stuff out. Don't need that. We don't need that. And let's put the postcard in. I know you guys can't see it, but it'll dictate the numbers. Oh, shit. Nothing at all. It's just flat, flat. Why is it flat, flat? Okay. So last time this happened, all I had to do unscrew the screws that connected the motherboard to the chassis. And there we go. Okay. So as you can see, something will show up on the screen. All right. So I don't know what that's about, but that is, you know what I'm going to do? There are these rubber, not rock, they're not rubber, but there are these paper grommets here. That isolate. I'm going to start with this one. Put this one in here. Now the grommet fell off. And I'm also going to unplug the hard drive, save it from repeated power on and power off cycles. Okay, good. It looks like it's working. Postcard's doing some stuff. We got some beeping and blooping. And yeah, mounting that power supply, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. That's that's a problem for another video. And also, yeah, I'm going to definitely do something with this battery. This is, I don't want to cuss, but it's, it's manure, horse manure. All right, now, aha, so it just doesn't like being screwed down into this spot. So you know what? It's just not going to be screwed into that spot. There must be some passage or something under there. I don't usually see a screw in that spot either. So that's weird. Anyways, we got enough standoffs. That's fine. All right, let's put some stuff back in. Sound card. I.O. card. Now we can mess around with... So what was wrong with the floppy? What didn't it like? I'm just assuming that lead one is... Unless it's an old controller card and it starts from here, but then why would it have two female type connectors? No, it's gotta be, this has gotta be right. Okay, so that looks like it goes in there. And we'll just do it one by one. We'll stick this in here first. Right. I'm going to have to take another approach on this.
get in there. The alternative is I might have to use another I.O. card. One what has the connectors closer to the body drive. Yeah, this isn't going to work. But for testing purposes, I will just hook up the drive to make sure the polarity is the same and everything is connected properly. There's a little notch here. It looks like it shows you that this is actually pin one. All right. Let's try that again. Okay, what the hell? this out or I get something. I not get anything. If I pull this out, how will I get something? Oh, there, no, there was something. Okay. So what's, what's causing the problem here? So that's working. Definitely off bench tested this. All right, let's just do that. Okay, looks good. Whatever, we'll just leave the sound card out for now. It's not like it's going to get connected anyways. Eight megs of RAM. Floppy drive A. Oh, you know what? It's going to definitely give an error because I had my CF connected to this. detect hard disk. Oh, wait, of course. That's the other reason it's giving an error, because hard drive ain't plugged in. Okay, and the focus on... Okay, so we have a hard drive light here that's on. Try to detect it. Reset does work. Okay, so let me hold down reset. Let this drive go in here. Resume. Speaker works, that's good. And it's booting. Okay. Very nice indeed. Does the A drive work? It does. Okay. I think that'll wrap it up for now. There's obviously a lot of work to be done here. I gotta figure out what the hell happened here. I, I'm curious to see what the megahertz display says. Looks like it's a uh, five volt. I wonder if I can just quickly wire something up here. Looks like it can connect to that. Let me that pull these out. Might be able to do that. Just so I can give myself another task. I mean, the goal was to have it boot. It is booting. That's good. I again may have to try to use another IO controller card to make it fit correctly. Let's bring this back here. 
I'm just messing with this thing. These wires. So these are Molex connectors. Oh, and I cut myself. That's Okay, you with them? I'm just getting to me. All right, well, it kept the date. That's good. I'm curious to see what this thing is. That's all the information you need. Benchmarks. I don't know if the turbo's on, so it might be into... Okay, so the turbo's on by default. Looks like it is uh, on par with a DX266. Or, sorry, what am I talking about? Um, it's on par with a DX40. You know what? I wonder if I can. If, I, if that just does this, can I break out this piece here? Let's yeah. see what I'm talking about. This is some weird connector I've never seen before. It's probably on the power supply that I bought from that lady. So I don't really mind savaging this because it's just a Molex connector. Uh, oh, it's black and red. It's the other way around. Nah, these really got to get out of here. All right, you know what? I'm not going to... I'll just... That's what I'll do. Kill connector, yo. We we'll use the teeth. Now we have our leads. Now, of course, it's going to be impossible for me to show you what the display reads out. Uh, but I'm connecting it now. And you will take my word for it. It says 10. I press turbo. Okay, the turbo button has to be activated on the motor. 10. So, 10 megahertz. This, depending on what position it's supposed to be in, um, uh, looks like it may have even been at 286 in here at one point. So, that's, that's interesting. All right. So, some work to do. And, you know, I probably got to take a shower and go to bed. I do have to work tomorrow, so... That will be it for tonight. Good luck and good day.